Right now, mining companies from China to Canada are trying to replicate a single piece of Australian technology and failing. This isn't just about rocks. It's about a $300 billion industry built on tech so advanced. It's practically proprietary magic. Why can't the richest countries in the world copy what Australia is doing? Meet Sarah Chen. She's a mining engineer from Perth who spent three years in Chile trying to implement Australian blast fragmentation technology. We had the blueprints, she told me, but the rocks just wouldn't cooperate. Here's the thing. Australia produces 50% of the world's lithium, 17% of global uranium, and leads the planet in iron or exports. Not because they have more resources, but because they can extract them better. The real secret? It's not in the mines at all. It's in the software rooms 200 meters underground. But wait. Before we begin, please subscribe to ensure that you never miss out on any of my essential stuff. Comment I subscribe below, and I will personally welcome you to our community. With that said, let's get started. Before we talk about the tech, we need to understand why Australian rocks are different, and why that matters for your smartphone. In 2019, Dr. James Hartley, a geologist working in Western Australia's Pilbara region, made a discovery that mining executives call the golden ticket. He found or deposits with 65% iron content. That's the highest natural concentration on Earth. The Pilbara's geological formation dates back 2.7 billion years, when Earth's oceans were rich in dissolved iron. This created what geologists call banded iron formations, and they are found almost nowhere else at this scale. If you've ever wondered why your Tesla battery costs what it does, this is where the story starts. Western Australia alone has more high-grade iron than all of North and South America combined. But here's the problem. Having the best rocks means nothing if you can't get them out of the ground efficiently. That's where the proprietary tech comes in. Imagine a 400-ton truck driving itself through a mine at night. Zero human intervention. Now imagine 200 of them, coordinated like a swarm. Meet Tom Radford. In 2015, he was a truck driver at Rio Tinto's Pilbara operations when management told him his job would be automated. I thought it was impossible, he recalls. Today, Tom operates 12 trucks simultaneously, from an office in Perth, 1,200 kilometers away. Rio Tinto's auto hole system, launched in 2018, now operates the world's first fully autonomous heavy haul railway. Over 200 driverless trucks move 1 billion tons of iron ore every year. But here's why no one else can replicate it. The system uses real-time GPS, LODAR, and machine learning algorithms developed specifically for Australia's variable terrain. Red dust storms, 50 degree heat, unpredictable wildlife crossings. When Chinese mining company Bao Steel tried to implement similar tech in Inner Mongolia in 2020, they faced a 67% failure rate. The software couldn't adapt to different soil compaction, different weather patterns. This isn't about secrecy. It's about environmental calibration. The AI was trained on millions of hours of Australian-specific data. But autonomous trucks? That's just the surface. The real breakthrough happens underground. Every blast in a mine is a $500,000 gamble. Too weak and you waste time. Too strong, and you pulverize the ore into dust. Australian companies have turned this into an exact science. Maria Santos is a blast engineer at Newmont's Boddington Gold Mine. In 2021, she used Orica's Blast IQ software to increase a recovery by 8%. That's $23 million. In a single quarter, here's how it works. Blast IQ uses AI to analyze rock density, moisture content, and fracture patterns in real time. It adjusts explosive placement within millimeters. A 2023 study by the University of Queensland found that Australian blast optimization reduces energy waste by 34% compared to conventional methods. If this sounds complex, it is, and that's exactly why copying it isn't just about buying the software. The precision means less environmental damage. Fewer toxic dust particles. Reduce groundwater contamination. But wait. If this tech is so good, why isn't it everywhere? Because the software is only half the equation. The other half? It's something no other country can replicate. 
Here's the secret. Australian mining tech isn't a single invention. It's a 40-year ecosystem of partnerships between mining companies, universities, and government that functions like a national laboratory. In 1979, the Australian government established the CSIRO Mineral Resources Division with a single mandate, make mining safer and more efficient. By 2024, they filed over 1,400 patents. The MET sector, mining equipment, technology, and services, is now worth $100 billion annually, 90% of which is developed through collaborative research between industry and academia. Let me give you a specific example. The Deep Exploration Technology CRC Cooperative Research Center brings together 38 organizations, universities, mining giants, tech startups. They share data. They share R&D costs. No other country has this model at scale. Think of it like Silicon Valley, but for digging holes really, really well. When Canadian mining company Barrick Gold tried to set up a similar innovation hub in Nevada in 2022, they couldn't get competing companies to collaborate. In Australia, competitors regularly share non-commercial research. This isn't philanthropy. It's strategic. Australia's mining-dependent economy created necessity-driven innovation. But there's one more tech that's putting Australia decades ahead. What if you could know the exact chemical composition of all before it even leaves the ground? Australian companies can. And it's changing global supply chains. David Kamoni is a metallurgist at BHP's Olympic Dam Mine. Using real-time spectral analysis technology, he can adjust processing chemicals within seconds. That reduces waste by 22%. Mine Sense Technologies, Australian founded, develop sensors that scan on conveyor belts at 1,000 tons per hour, identifying copper, gold, and uranium concentrations with 98% accuracy. A 2024 report by MIT's Materials Research Lab called as the most significant efficiency leap in extractive metallurgy since Froth Flotation in 1905. If you're wondering why this matters to you, this tech is why Australia can produce battery-grade lithium at half the cost of South American competitors, and the precision reduces tailings dam waste by up to 40%, directly addressing mining's biggest environmental liability. So if this is so revolutionary, why aren't other countries just licensing it? They are. But implementation requires existing infrastructure, trained personnel, regulatory frameworks that take decades to build. Australia has all three. But now, a new competitor is emerging, and it could change everything. China just invested $47 billion into developing their own autonomous mining systems. They are not trying to copy Australian tech anymore. They are trying to leapfrog it. In 2023, Chinese tech giant Huawei partnered with state-owned mining company China Molybdenum to deploy 5G-connected mining robots in the Congo. Early results show 31% productivity increases. According to a 2024 report by S&P Global, China now accounts for 38% of all global mining tech patents filed, up from 12% in 2015. Unlike Australia's collaborative model, China's system is fully integrated. Government funding, tech development, mining operations under unified strategic control. If China successfully develops comparable tech at scale, Australia's mining export advantage could erode within 10 years. But Australia still holds one critical card, rare earth processing technology, which China desperately needs to secure supply chain independence. This isn't just about Australia versus China. It's about who controls the resources needed for the renewable energy transition. So where does this leave the industry and the global economy? The race for mining tech dominance isn't just about efficiency anymore. It's about who powers the next century. Remember Sarah Chen? The engineer who couldn't replicate Australian tech in Chile? She's now back in Perth, leading a project to develop climate-adaptive AI for mines in 12 countries. We are not keeping secrets anymore, she says. We are exporting the ecosystem. The Australian government's 2024 critical mineral strategy allocated $2 billion to help international partners adopt Australian mining tech, turning competitors into clients. By 2030, Australian mining tech could reduce global extraction costs by 18%, making renewable energy materials 30% cheaper. 
directly accelerating the climate transition. The proprietary advantage isn't permanent, but the innovation culture that created it can be. So the question isn't really whether others can copy the tech. It's whether they can copy the conditions that made it possible. Here's the real debate. Should Australia keep its mining tech advantage, or is sharing it globally the smarter long-term strategy? Drop your take in the comments and explain why. I'll pin the most interesting answer.